Good morning, sir, and hello to all. Today, I am going to discuss about the properties of bismuth ferrite perovskite nanoparticles for magnetic hyperthermia applications. My name is Sukham Parnami from MSP Department, PhD First Year. Today, I am going to discuss the origin, history, and structure of perovskite nanoparticles, the structure of one of its compound, bismuth ferrite, and several properties, and then application, and finally the review papers. Uh, in the in case of uh, origin and history, we can see that perovskite was initially named uh, for calcium titanate, and uh, on the then, then later on all the materials with the same crystal structure as calcium titanate are named, termed as perovskites. This name was coined by uh, on the name of a scientist uh, Gustav Rose who find who found them in Ural Mountains of Russia in 1839. Uh, these compounds used to be very uh, stable in structure and uh, can be found in very large number of compounds with the variety of properties and with several applications in dielectric and magnetic uh, fields. The structure of perovskite can be seen here. Uh, we can see oxygen anions can be placed on face center position and then there are two varieties of cations. One of that will take uh, corners position and then the other cation will take the octahedra void position that octahedra means that these are surrounded by this cation b is surrounded by the octahedra made by the oxygen anions and this octahedra actually will be responsible for electrical properties now the structure of bismuth ferrite that i studied in the paper uh, is having rhombohedral structure with rc3c group rhombohedral means uh, it's a, um, a structure in which all the sides and angles are equal but angles are not 90 degree so and R3C is one of the 33 space groups in trigonal crystal system so this perovskite is uh, the perovskite possesses multiferric properties multiferric properties means uh, several ferric properties ferro means which can retain their property after removing the material from the field that we have applied that field can be electric field that field can be electric field magnetic field or mechanical field so this perovskite materials can have ferroelectric ferromagnetic and ferroelastic properties that's why it is uh, that we can say collectively multiferric properties so several properties have been listed here that I am going to discuss one by one in brief. Electrical properties in perovskite material, suppose if we dope it with copper, para, copper, if it is copper based, then at high temperature it behaves as superconductor. So that is because, uh, that is when, when we dope, uh, when we uh, sits copper on A sides and different, different B sides we can generate. So different uh, material we can develop. Then dielectric property is due to cation displacements actually. The as we have seen B cation will be sitting inside the octahedra. We can see here this octahedra made by the oxygen and inside that uh, B cation will be there and that feels the displacement. That is that is a, that that's what cation displacement. So that feels cation displacement on the application of electric field. Then there may be octahedral tilting oxygen be made by the oxygen this also can be the reason of di uh, charge generation charge storage then distortion and some defects can be there that can be grain boundary defect or various point defect then this lead to the generation of uh, change ch uh, this lead to the change in relative permittivity which is a measure of charge storage or okay so increase in temperature cause increase in relative permittivity per permittivity why because increase in temperature cause more mobile the charges so more the more charges will be mobile more polarizable they will be so and uh, the second criteria is on the frequency of the electric field that we are providing more the frequency will be lesser they can uh, behave that fast so more the frequency of the electric field lesser will be the relative permittivity lesser will be the uh, dielectric storage so this uh, directly shows the applications in storage devices 
as if the relative permittivity will be higher than the move storage property they will retain so we can improve these storage property dielectric properties by changing the cations at a and b positions so that's why we can see calcium titanate barium titanate zirconium titanate bismuth ferrite so we can change oxygen is common in all but the cations a and b positions are changing and that's why it is very useful because we can tune them by placing different different possibilities of cations okay diffusivity is the phenomenon in which the charge has to transfer travel from one side to another side through some space so because in this type of material perovskite low diffusivity because the vacancies are not enough in population that's why these are weak in diffusivity but we can create some cations or anions vacancies for increasing their diffusivity and that's how their ionic conductivity so as we can see here this cation at b position can go at this site only when this item will not be there so we there have to uh, be the this so they, we need vacancy at this site so only then this can tra transfer from this site to this site so if we want diffusivity or ionic conductivity then we have to introduce we have to generate some uh, vacancy concentration so we need to in uh, to increase diffusivity we have to have some uh, vacancy concentrations so we can introduce by some uh, by, by substitutional and or, or or by some other way we can introduce these vacancies now optical properties of this type of material can be seen Uh, have wide very wide application in solar cells because of their high absorption coefficient and excellent charge carrier transport because they are used to be very crystalline in nature now their applications have been listed here in photovoltaic leds laser electromagnetic devices transducer many of them are there and these are only because this type of material uh can have very high dielectric storage property and mechanical property so as we have seen they are multiferric materials so that's why they are very high they have very high application in these fields now i have listed here some are uh, different different type of material with their properties and their the critical points on this side this column so uh, so we can go through that now there i have listed uh, two or three papers so one of in this paper we can see so in 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 this paper we can see white light control control magnetism and ferromagnetic property so we we can see here that uh, there is remarkable ferromagnetic uh, properties bulk bismuth ferrite is anti ferromagnetic we can see but when we convert it in nano sheets it used to behave like a ferromagnet Be, uh, and that is because of be, uh, it shows substantial ferromagnetism that is size dependent actually so we can see if the the nano sheets uh, you have a strong attraction toward the permanent magnet these magnets also have seen uh, an isotropy that means if there is easy axis and hard axis in which we can uh, magnetize them as we can see in this light when we provide light of different different intensity then we can see there is decrease in magnetization and that can be due to the reason that there is increase in temperature and that may cause decrease in ferromagnetic property of that material and it, it has been seen that if we uh, if we compare the material in which no any light is provided and if we provided light of 60 milliwatt per centimeter square it has been seen that 12% decrement in magnetization okay so one doubt was there in my mind but i couldn't find it in the research paper that if it is reducing then is there any way to increase by means of light okay so that was my doubt but uh, okay here is the mechanism why uh, with the light magnetism is changing so we can see we, as we in uh, incident some light there is change in charge density in the material and that cause the coupling of ferroelectricity and magnetic magnetism that is inverse faraday law faraday law uh, tells us if there is magnetism there will be change in electric properties but inverse faraday law if there is ferromagnetic property there will be change in magnetic property okay so this cause the this affects the polarization and hence the magnetoelectric effect so here i concluded the, from this research paper that with the help of light 
magnetization decreases due to inverse faraday effect and polarization increases up to 225% of the value and and hence the magnetic magnetoelectric effect which is defined as by uh, which is defined uh, by this equation we can see at the bottom so it also increases linearly why this is behaving like uh, why this polarization is behaving there there can be several reasons there, uh, there can be increased in conductivity or photoelectric effect or temperature change it can be and uh, or it can be ferroelectric domain mobility so we have seen in the previous slide effect of light on these three phenomena here we have uh, we are looking at the effect of temperature on magnetization that we can see de there is decrease in magnetization as we are familiar that uh, due to thermal energy randomization of the domains will be there so decrease in magnetization and it is uh, it has been seen in the uh, uh, data also so with the increase in magnetic field all these three phenomena has been shown increasing in the last paper we, uh, they have used different different solvents acetic acid and then ethyl alcohol ethylene ethylene glycol sorry so acetic acid uh, as we have seen in the acetic acid ethylene glycol have high crystallinity pure phase smaller size that means better uh, crystalline phase of bismuth ferrite or para viscous material can be obtained in the ethylene glycol and why is it so because of its chelating nature that we can see in this because of high chelating nature of this ethylene glycol it can construct the phase from converting from one to another increase in crystalline that we as we can see increase in crystallite size depicts strengthening of pure bismuth ferrite so we have seen the increase in crystallite size with the help uh, when we developed by uh, ethylene glycol solvent so as we can see here there is a bridging chelating agent ethylene glycol and that causes the uh, stabilization of the phase that's why only pure, pure bismuth ferrite we can obtain over 300 degrees celsius as we can see in this graph the first graph is showing at normal temperature and then at 100 degrees celsius then third is at uh, 200 degrees celsius and then a fourth is at 400 300 degrees celsius so this the uh, uh, this is for acetic acid as we can see we are uh, when we are increasing temperature the at 200 temperature only the phase bismuth ferrite conformed but further increase in temperature the uh, mixed phase has been obtained because at high temperature acetic acid is not chelating or is not is, is destabilizing the bismuth ferrite so it uh, we are getting two different different phases but it is not so in uh, ethylene glycol okay so the take home message from this paper is that there is the domination of solvent also what we are taking for generation of paraviscite material there is a domination of the light or magnetic field or electric field what we are uh, what we are using to tuning the property so these factors also matters and here we can see Finally, that magnetic influence on temperature change. See, uh, if we are t looking at acetic uh, acetic acid, the phase is not stable at higher temperature. But in case of acetyl, uh, in case of ethylene glycol, at higher temperature, the saturation magnetization is getting higher value, and also it is getting more stability. That is due to the phase stability or the change in bond angle of the octahedra or the smaller grain led to the conversion of helical spin that is present here in this finally we can see that due to magnetic anisotropy this change was there so acetic acid has low magnetization and high coercivity but it is opposite in case of ethylene glycol that is all from my side in the report thank you